Joseph Weeks writes, hello guys, I've been obsessively watching this show for several months now, and I love watching you guys get all extra sweaty. Ooh. <laughs> I have a two part question about Fantastic Four. First off, do you guys think that we will ever see a director's cut of this movie or will we be left eternally wondering what could have been? Secondly, what do you guys think will ultimately happen in the future with this property and franchise? Those are actually two very interesting questions. If you want, if you just get off the, the giant fanboyism platforms that all of us are guilty of being on from time to time, they're two <laughs> very fascinating questions. Uh, as far as the question about, because a lot of people, I don't know about you guys, a lot of people tweeted me this question over the past week about, could we see a director's cut then? Could, because we've heard about yeah. all the, the division between the director and the studio. Could there be a director's cut? I feel fairly confident in saying not a chance in hell. This is a studio right now who, for their own reasons, uh, you know, the tweet or whatever, they hate this director. Yeah. And we have a director, for his own very good reasons, hates this studio. And I don't think you're going to see them collaborating to put together what would have been Josh Trank's vision. It, it's not going to happen. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, we'll leave that up, up to everybody else to decide. On As far as the question about... Now, this is the far more interesting one. Like about what happens now with Fantastic Four. And it's not as simple as a lot of us make it out to be like, well, they suck, give it back to Marvel. It's, it's not that simple, even though probably ultimately that's going to be what's best for this thing. Look, I said this before. I am totally an advocate of other Marvel characters staying with other studios because it gives us more diversity of films. It gives us several cinematic universes. It gives us more movies every year that we can watch because one studio can only make so many films per year. I'm all for that. But in the case of Fantastic Four, can the studio still make money with it? I, I think the answer is no. This is now three, if you want to count the Corman thing, four. But this is three strikes in a row. They've, they've botched three straight Fantastic Four movies Obviously, the audience was not willing to forgive it just because it was called Fantastic Four, and the box office results show that. You see behind me, it came in second place to Mission Impossible, which is kind of divine justice, I suppose. Um, I, think, I think ultimately what will happen here, this is not my fanboys, I'm saying what should happen, what I think will happen here, Fox can't do this again. They're going to take a massive bath financially on this film, which is not good. I don't think they're going to try it again. I believe what will happen is that the rights will lapse and Marvel will get this property back. So, yeah, will will a director's cut happen? No chance in hell, in my opinion, at any rate. What's going to happen with Fantastic Four moving forward? I think Fox just throws their hands up in the air and say we give up. Anyway, Christian, what do you think? Well, let's start with the director's cut. Um, as far I agree with you, I think because they these – this is not a, a relationship that is going well <laughs> right now. <laughs> so I don't. Th you would you would you would think that Fox would be like, no, of course you're never going to see it. That's the version, and we're sticking to the fact that that's what he wanted to do as well too. So you most likely will not see that. However, they are still, and, and I'm still sticking on the side that you're not going to see it. But I wouldn't be shocked if it's like we need to try to sell this movie as much as we can. <laughs> we need to try to sell Blu-rays and digital downloads. Let's just put the director's cut in there as well on the Blu-rays and they find a way to do it. Now, will that happen? Probably not. But I wouldn't be shocked if that was another way for them to try to make up some money for this fantastic disaster. Um, now, as far <laughs> as sequels go, um, I do think they're going to try hard to make it again because they don't want to lose the rights because they have... X-Men, they have Fantastic Four, there was always a vision to put these two properties together because that's all they have and they can build out their own universe. Um, I think it's a mistake. I think it should go back to Marvel. I think Marvel knows what to do with these characters and would do, and eventually after phase three or four or five, you could start putting them in there and we'll, be, we'll accept them in five to 10 years from now, which is ultimately what I would like to see happen. But I think Fox is going to take another shot. I think they're going to make a lot of money from uh, Apocalypse. I think they'll make money from Apes, and they'll start making some more money. They'll go, let's try one more time. Now, whether or not it's a sequel or another reboot, you, it's going to be hard as hell, no matter what it is. Because if it's a sequel to this fart box, then who knows what's going to happen. But if it's as far as like <laughs> fart box, it, it might be. It's just a big box of farts. It sure is. You open it up, and you go, oh, oh, that's definitely what that is. Actually, it's a box in which you fart. Yes. Oh, you yeah. fart into it. Sure, and everybody was doing confusion. it. Fox goes, I don't like the way you're farting in that box. Let me do it. Um, so anyway, I can. it's going to be tough no matter what. Mark, how do you see this playing out? Uh, you know what's interesting is that the Silver Surfer might be a different way into this because the Silver Surfer is a comic book character that has stood, he's served on his own two legs stood, in the, in the comic book world forever. I mean, he bent them at the perfect 45-degree angle. 
<laughs> so maybe if they wanted to do a Silver Surfer film that's independent of the Fantastic Four, but still is kind of in that universe, and then you can try to tie in X-Men that way. And this is just me being somebody in the studio that's like, I'm trying to salvage this project because I don't think it should be. I think this should be buried for a while. Having said that, you were laughing at Fartbox? No, no, no. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, you know I'm saying, do you know? Because you bury a Fartbox for 20 years and it still stinks. <laughs> no, I was just saying, you know who is hoping that they decide not to do it? The actors who locked themselves into a contract oh to do my. sequels. Oh, yeah, that's right. Because they don't want any part no. of this. You think Miles, Miles Teller would rather be a New York Jets quarterback right now <laughs> than be back in Fantastic Four? Right. Having said all that, I wasn't around when Superman 2 was released. And so I don't know how much Richard Donner hated that version of it and how long it took for the Donner cut of Superman 2 to see the light of day. But maybe 20 years down the road, and Josh Trank has made a bunch of incredible movies since Fantastic Four, since that disaster. Maybe he he ends up doing a big budget movie and does some cool independent ones, and then he wants to come back, and somebody else is the head at Fox and says, you know what, let's dig that up because the fans are really curious about it. I feel horrible for Fantastic Four fans. I know there's a lot of you out there. I just do not care about seeing a sequel to this movie or any Fantastic Four stuff for a long time. Here's an interesting scenario. Let me pitch this by you. It is clear from everything we know from behind the scenes, Fox knew they had a disaster on their hand a long time ago, and they they probably know they 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 know they botched this movie. They hid it from from journalists, all that kind of stuff. So they've known for a while. The question is, how long have they known they completely botched mm -hmm. this? If it's been for a while, let me pitch a totally unlikely scenario to you. They've known for a long time. We just screwed this up. We screwed up this Fantastic Four completely. No one's going to like it. We're going to have to reboot it again if they do want to hang on to the rights. Okay, so let's get on the phone with Brian Singer. Brian, can you throw in a scene <laughs> where you take one of these 10 actors and just have a short scene where Professor Xavier introduces him to somebody and says, this is my friend Reed Richards. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Boom, door open for rebooting it yet again in a very short period. Could you see Fox trying something, a stunt like that? Yeah, uh, I mean, in, in Apocalypse? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they it, would have had to have known for a while yeah, that this was going to suck. Uh, I mean, it. I could see them maybe tr if they were going to do it, that would work. Or post credit scene. It's gonna. It's. Gonna, it, I could see also see Brian Singer going. No oh, thanks. You know. <laughs> so you, when, when something stinks this bad, you got to get as far away as you can yeah. because you you run the risk of corrupting your own movie Apocalypse with this. This thing is like a skunk spray. Okay, they should bathe mm. X Men Apocalypse in tomato juice to make sure nothing from Fantastic Four gets on that movie. You do not want to cross these franchises over right now. Excellent skunk point. Box.